Welcome to another Pro Angler Pro Interview, where we get the interviews from the sport fishing industry professionals that you want to hear from. This interview brought to you by Baitsmith. When you want quality fish, you buy a quality bait. In this interview, Pro Angler Multi-Species Pro Chris Plunts will interview Mark Divens, biologist for the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, who will tell us about the Gillnet Survey Program. So anyway, I'm Chris from Pro Angler, and you're? Yeah, Mark Divens with Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and last week we conducted our first gill netting survey of Northern Pike on Box Canyon Reservoir, and that consisted of 60 net sets over the five days that we were up there, four nights, and we caught a total of 755 pike in that sample, which was far more than we expected going into it, but mm -hmm. it gives us our first point and first population estimate for the Ponder Ray River that that'll be our baseline for future surveys and monitoring that population. What do you think so, your average size was? I know your net holes are probably bigger, so most of them. Our average size was 20, mid-20s, you know, 20 to 30 inches, mm -hmm. so that's five, six pounds. Oh, okay. And our largest fish was mid-20s, mid-20 pound fish. Oh, okay. Four, mid so you, did you have a lot of other holes in the nets where fish ripped loose and stuff, or you didn't get some really not, big ones? Not too much. I, yeah, I don't know if we... Pike are interesting. They don't get caught in a gill net like a, a trout or a salmon yeah. does by the gills. They tend to get just stuck by their snout. So you can catch oh. a 20-pound pike in one-inch mesh net. Yeah, they just he just gets get hung up on that, that nose piece. Tangled in it. Yeah, and so you'll see those large fish oh, in okay. that net. Oh, okay, and it just holds so, them. Yeah, yeah they, they tend to roll like an alligator so yeah. they'll wrap themselves up in it but yeah like a lake shore or something it kind of yeah, crushes them yeah it's effective but mm -hmm. with that we took diet samples you know we collected the stomachs we sexed the fish we determined males or females if they had spawned yet mm -hmm. we take scales and clythra which is part of the operculum which is a bone that we can age the fish from and and that's in the jaw bone fish. of the fish yeah in the in the operculum which is the, the gill cover oh okay the, the cover okay yeah, so it's a piece of that bone and and those bony structures you can age the fish and so we can look at the age ranges within the population and, and that gives us a good idea of what the growth rates are for the population. And oh, okay. Just a lot of information from that one week survey. Well, like a 10 pound fish is what, about five years, six years old? Yeah, and there we're even seeing 10 pounds before that. They're oh. growing really fast right now, you know, four, four mm -hmm. to five. Four to five and stuff like that, yeah. So. Okay, yeah, because the guys are all paired now. You know, North Idaho Pike Club, they're a little nervous, you know. Well, that's what I was talking to one of those guys this morning. You know, I was saying, mm -hmm. I hear you're up there netting all the pike you can, and, and that's not it at mm -hmm. all. We're just taking a standard sample yeah. that's statistically valid, and you can compare that from year to year mm -hmm. to, to monitor trends in abundance and, oh, yeah. and watch that population. So you're going to sample every year or every third year or something? Yeah, we'll, we'll look at the day that we got this year and set up a, a sampling plan for the future, whether that's every year or every other year or something like that. Oh, okay. Probably here in the near future. We do a similar survey in the fall for our walleye populations on our big populations, Lake, Lake Roosevelt, oh, East okay. Washington, and then also Potholes Reservoir, Moses Lake, Banks Lake. And we do those each year in the fall, and, and those typically we catch 200 to 300 walleye in a sample, mm -hmm. but that just gives us that snapshot for the year and can compare year to year. And okay. We found that having that data year to year, you really learn a lot more about the population. And in the case of walleye, we've been able to relax our regs, where which allows more harvest for people without mm -hmm. harming the, the population. Yeah, like is, like in Banks Lake and Roosevelt yeah. in the fall, where do you find them walleye? Is thirty feet of water, twenty feet? They're they're spread throughout. We really do get them, you know, from the shallows down All to down. down to 50, 60 feet. Our our net sets in both that Pike survey and the mm -hmm. and the other surveys are, you know, typically shoreline oriented. In Lake Roosevelt, we have some deep water sets, and we will get. Oh, okay. Down in over so you normally set deep. set your nets shallow and then yeah. run one end deep. Right. Oh, okay. So yeah. From, from shoreline perpendicular to the shoreline. About 50, 60 feet out or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Lake Roosevelt, they, they yeah. drop off like they that. They drop off good, places, yeah. So. <laughs> well, but, that's good news. Yeah. it's a good technique. You know, we have that on our website. Oh, okay. All the stats and what you guys got and stuff? You can look at for those fall walleye index netting surveys. Oh, okay. And Does it show location, too, if the guys want to go fishing them? Or Not specific locations of specific sets. Mm -hmm. It's a random set, and that changes year to year. Yeah, I mean, one um, year you're down in Spokane Arm, next year you're up in Kettle. And... Well, we do the entire reservoir, oh. and actually on that Lake Roosevelt survey, we work with the um, Spokane tribe and the okay. Colville tribe. Yep. We have it broken into three sections. So in that week-long effort, mm -hmm. we'll have like nine boats and 
three, three people to a boat, so almost 30 people working for a week mm -hmm. on that reservoir from our three different agencies to... Oh, to, okay, and then they run, that. what, about a dozen nets apiece? 50 nets apiece. 50 so nets apiece. 150 net sets. Yeah. It, and there are, it's, our average is about three walleye per net, mm -hmm. and we actually were expecting on the pond array to see three or four walleye, or three or four pike, pike. rather, yeah. per net, and we saw the average was more like 10 or 11 pike 10, 11. per net. Well, that's so, actually a good turn, yeah. So, there, it's, you know, huge population, and now we have a place to start with tracking that through time and, mm -hmm. and using that data to shape regulations for the, for the fishery. So oh, okay. It's, it's all good. Well, that sounds good then. Well, thanks. <laughs> Keep a sharp eye out for future pro angler pro interviews. We've got quite a few in the hopper and some that may actually shock you. For you walleye pros, if you're interested in joining a pro angler walleye team, we're recruiting now. Give Ron Charlton a call. We'd love to hear from you.